Continental drift, the theory that the Earth's continents drifted to where they sit today. It's the year 1569. Gerardus Mercator publishes his first world map. It's the first of its kind with orthogonal lines of longitude spaced evenly and lines of latitude spaced so that sailing courses of constant bearing were represented as straight lines. Mercator's map is the most accurate world map produced yet, showing the shape of the continents and where they sit relative to each other. Hundreds of copies were produced. 1596. Abraham Ortelius, creator of the first modern atlas, suggests that the continents were once joined together. Seems pretty obvious you would think that someone would have suggested this theory sooner, but you have to remember that you could be excommunicated by the Catholic Church for saying things that were not church doctrine. It was less than 100 years before that Martin Luther was excommunicated. 1596 to 1912. For 326 years, scientists couldn't determine what would cause the continents to drift. What force could be so powerful to move entire continents? The general belief amongst geologists was that the ocean surface sank to its current location due to the sheer weight of the landmass. They even believed that the ocean surface was flat, like the shorelines they walked upon. In 1912, Alfred Wegener publishes The Origins of Continents and Oceans with compelling evidence showing that the continents are slowly drifting around the Earth. The evidence, similar shorelines, the shape and composition between the continents is the same. Even the finest observable details like folds and undulations in the rock are exactly the same between continents separated by thousands of miles of ocean. Identical plant fossils, identical animal fossils, the remains of the freshwater reptile Mesosaurus can be found in Southern Africa and South America. 1959. Harry Hess publishes History of the Ocean's Basins, presenting evidence of seafloor spreading. While sailing the Earth's oceans during World War II, Hess maps the ocean floor using sonar. His maps show a huge mountain chain spanning the length of the Atlantic Ocean. Hess takes core samples and discovers that the ocean floor gets older the farther he gets from the ridge. Hess argues that new ocean floor is being created at the ridge, pushing the continents of North and South America away from Africa and Europe. But the Earth's surface isn't indefinitely expanding. Something must explain where the crust disappears. In 1968, scientist Jack Oliver publishes Seismology and the New Global Tectonics, explaining through seismic surveys taken around the world that seafloor indeed disappears at subduction zones, areas of high seismic activity where the crust from one plate is being forced down and below another plate. Continental drift is explained. We now know that Earth's continents were once together in one giant supercontinent 300 million years ago and they drifted to where they lie today, and they still are. Where will they be in another 300 million years?